just a great text because it, it fits so well with the hour Amen. in which we're living. Arm yourself with the mind of Christ, Peter's telling the saints here. Again, as we've said before, we believe with all of our heart that as much as we can find a lot of great truth here, doctrinally, the saints that are alive during the tribulation period will find the most in these words that can be found because, again, Peter's writing to those 144,000 found in Revelation 7. And, of course, he can well speak to them because, like he said in verse 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. And certainly... Uh, the Jews that will believe in Jesus know that that's how they live today. I don't know if you listen to uh, these talk shows any, but at night, you know, one of my favorite persons to listen to is Dr. Michael Savage. And just before Michael Savage on WJR, you can often hear the Jew, Mark Levine. And Mark Levine was talking about how he's a Jew, but man, he loves Christmas, and he loves the Christmas songs, and he loves the Christmas trees, and he loves the... Uh, Christmas presents, and he's just into Christmas, man. Because uh, he just lives like a Gentile. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and that's the way, way a lot of people used to do before they got saved. Amen. Amen. But now, if you belong to Jesus, you're supposed to be different now. Thank God even Peter is going to bring this home to us today. Amen. Number one, he says you got to die to self. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself. Uh -huh. See, a man doesn't... Every, every creature God ever made, ever made has a means of protecting itself. Uh -huh. For the eagle, it is its talons. I don't know if you've seen the latest YouTube, but the most popular YouTube video right now is of this big, giant, golden eagle flying through the air and this man standing in a park. There's a few people in the park. There's one man over there yonder, a good uh, 75 feet away with a couple babies. He's fooling with one and he's about 12 foot from it and fooling with the other. they got their little winter coats on. He's filming this beautiful golden eagle that's flying along and then all of a sudden it swoops down and it picks up that baby! Wow. It carries it about six feet before it drops it. And thank God the cameraman had enough sense to, uh, to throw the camera down, and not a little bit, throw it down, but he quit video with the eagle and went running to try to help, and the father turned, and man, that big old wingspan of that eagle, he took off after it, and sure enough, praise the Lord, it dropped that baby. Mm -hmm. Must be hungry is all I can figure, amen. Mm -hmm. yes. But an eagle has its talents. Mm -hmm. A shark's got some teeth, amen. Amen. A bear's got her claws and her teeth. Amen. And power. Mm -hmm. Man's the only creature that if he needs something to help him, he's naked. He got squat. That's why it took Sam Colt to make man equal. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Colt made that Colt pistol now. It was an equalizer. Now man had a way of defending himself. Mm -hmm. See, you got to have some liberty teeth. Because if you don't arm yourself, you can easily be overcome as a man. Mm -hmm. That's why the government has bought all this ammunition. Why did they buy all this ammunition and now they want to pass a law saying nobody can have a gun? <coughs> because they're getting all the ammunition and they don't want you to have it. That's why. And here Peter says, arm yourselves. What? Arm yourselves likewise with the, mind, with the same mind that Christ had over there. Philippians chapter 2. Amen? Amen. Well, the Bible says he humbled himself. He thought it not anything to be equal with God, but humbled himself, became of no reputation. There you go. Took upon himself the form of a man and took seven steps downward in humility and suffered the death of the cross. And then Amen. God's honored him now with seven steps upward. Amen. And uh, that's the kind of mind we need to have, Peter says in these last days. Die yourself. Deny yourself. Give up sin. That's pretty strange. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Obviously, if you're not living by your lusts, you probably ain't going to do too much sinning. But uh -huh. as long as you can feel, as long as you can feel free.
to feed your flesh, there you go. There's a good chance you're going to be involved in sin. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Because you're living very presumptuously. Feeling. And you're living by your feeling-oriented lifestyle and your life, and you ain't going to be much for God. Amen. Uh huh. Let's look at Second Corinthians. How Paul said it in Second Corinthians chapter five. Again, like we've showed you before, it was really Peter's just a Reader's Digest conversion. Uh, uh, Reader's Digest version of everything Paul wrote, that's for sure. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said this in verse 14. Now get a hold of this thing. Now this is what separates Gateway and Baptist Church from your average, you know, south side schmuck town church. Uh, where everything goes but the King James Bible. Yeah. Amen. Paul said, for the love of Christ constrains us. Of course it don't constrain them. Uh -huh. The love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. Then we're all dead. See, when Dan Harden got saved, Dan Harden even getting dunked in water was a picture. The old Dan Harden died. Mm -hmm. There's a new Dan Harden to come out of that water. Because mm -hmm. when I got saved, I became a new man. Old things were passed away. All things became new. Amen. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Mm. Amen. What? But unto him which died for them and rose again. Uh huh. Right. That's right. I'm not supposed to be living for me no more. I'm supposed to be living for Jesus. Right. Amen. That's what Paul said. Right. I can't be like that pastor said. Yeah, I'm going to sin. I'm going to live. I'm going to do a lot of sin. No, I can't sin no more. Amen. No. I gotta quit living the flesh. I don't want to sin. Uh huh. I want to cease from sin. Amen. Right. Amen, bro. How can I give something up? Oh Jesus! Oh, He made the sun go around the world. The world don't go around the sun. Oh boy, I'm gonna latch onto that. Uh huh. How else can I be strange? Amen. How else can I be like Jesus? Mm -hmm. That He died for all. That they which live should henceforth live. Uh, not live, live unto themselves, not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. there it is. he's a new creature. That's right. See, that's the question. Are you I wonder that's right. if there's anything in your life that shows you're now a slave to Christ, whereas you used to be the slave of Satan. I wonder if there's anything about you that shows you have to take all your wants and desires and place them second because you got a new master. Amen. A new master. Right. Again, that old son would be offended that you're calling him master. Even Judas could call him master. Right, right, right. They definitely don't call him Lord, and they don't know him as Lord. Though they sing, Lord, Lord, they sing songs about it. They don't know what the word means. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. So this is interesting that he says, first of all, you need to die to yourself and arm yourself with that same mind Jesus had, that mind of humility. Amen. Let's look at that real quick. Getting the verse, go to Philippians two and read that. Amen. Because this is what the incarnation is really all about. Right, right, right. When Jesus was born in late September, early October. Right. Amen. The most interesting thing about this business is that Jesus would come in flesh yeah. to redeem us. Amen? Right, right. And he says in Philippians 2, 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. Yeah. Now, you might walk around here as a free American and have a job and not be any man's slave, but yet technically, amen? That's right. Why can't you take upon yourself the form of a servant? Right. Right. Why can't the people at work and everybody that thinks you're so weird, so strange, be because they know you love Jesus and you're a King James Bible fanatic? Amen, that's right. Amen. See, they, he made himself of no reputation. 
Right. Meaning he didn't care about popularity contests. That's right. He wasn't pro trying to be the most popular pastor in downtown, uh, down Metro Detroit. Right. right. Took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Right. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Amen. Here we see the faith of Christ in his humiliation. Amen. Right. As he humbled himself. And Peter's challenging us to be of the same mind. Be like Jesus. Arm yourself. You don't need a 357. But you need to get a hold of what Jesus was and what Jesus is. Amen. Get a hold of him being your master and how you're not living for yourself no more. Amen. It's awful quiet in here. Yes, sir. I wonder if I had the two ameners I got to be quiet. If anybody else would buzz loose. Amen. 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 Secondly, he says you do God's will for the rest of your days. Yes. Amen? Amen. That's what we need to do. Yes. We need to do God's will for the rest of our days. Man. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Amen. Yeah. See, see, he started out for as much sin as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Poor old Jesus. Evil Jesus wasn't no sinner, but at the same time, half his life spent running hither, thither, and yon, raising the dead, healing the sick, giving people food, living for other men's lusts. That's all Jesus was doing. Hmm. But yeah, he came here for a higher purpose. Amen. He came here for the will of God. Praise God. Amen. The will of God. Amen. Amen. Do God's will for the rest of your days. Yes, sir. Yeah. Quit running around trying to please mom and dad and every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Right. Hey. Amen. 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 Your job is not to make the mayor happy or to please even the building inspector. That's right. Amen. Now, that should have got a big amen on that. Hey. We're not living for right to die. <laughs> this flesh, the lust of men. Well, boy, they sure have a, have a lot more opinion of you if you give them a Christmas present or pitch in for the boss's, boss's bonus, you know. Right. <laughs> no, do God's will the rest of your late days. Go ahead and be strange. It's okay to be strange. Jesus was strange. This is a strange work. His strange work, the Bible says, that he's going to do. Especially when he comes back in judgment. Mm -hmm. He's coming. Amen. Now we're going to step in it. Verse 3. For the that? time past of our life. Uh -huh. uh, of course, our moms and dads raised us all to be just as worldly as everybody else, mm -hmm. trying to fit in. They try to help celebrate the same pagan holidays, the same pagan festivals. Just, can't we all just get along, some fool once said? No, not if you're going to be strange. Mm -hmm. Not if you're going to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Any fool can be saved. That light went on, then it went off. Well, I think we need a new battery, fellas. Yeah. Amen. amen. So let's see what we can do. Yeah, amen. Thank you, man. So he says, thirdly, be fed up with sin. Amen. Know that you have sinned enough. Amen. That's sure you sinned. And you know what sin's about. Right. But can't we finally turn our back on sin for a little while? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. I'm praying for that day you turn 60. <laughs> Listen, the closer I got to this date, the more and more I wasn't interested in sin as much as I was in trying to stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I used to hear what Dr. Ruckman talk about, just maintenance of this old body. Believe me, you ain't interested in sin the older you get. You're just wanting to try to somehow maintain your body and keep alive. <laughs> it's easy to turn away from sin, ain't it? Amen. I don't need to sin no more. I've done had my fill of all that baloney. Amen. I know what a void and the, the vanity that is. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. 
it gets a little easier to turn the devil down every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get fed up with sin. Amen. Knowing that you've sinned enough for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Yeah, we used to live like them pagans, heathens. Amen. When we walked in lasciviousness, uh -huh. lusts, excess of wine, revelings, uh -huh. banquetings and abominable idolatries. Amen. Not just any old idolatry, abominable idolatries. Amen. I mean, the stuff would make you sick. Right. Yeah. A little now. Amen. The right. Bible speaks much in 1 Corinthians 15 about how covetousness is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Want stuff all the time. Want somebody else's stuff. Want something for nothing. Mm -hmm. Running for the lottery ticket. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's foolishness. It's sin. Right. Amen. 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 Well, we can go to, man, we can go to preaching now, amen. Amen. For the time past of our life. See, in other words, we're not supposed to be living for lasciviousness no more. That's amen. right. Now, when I think of lasciviousness, the first word I think of is that old Anglo-Saxon word of wantonness. Because, again, what's this season all about? Well, I want this. And I, well, sweetheart, get in line there and tell Santa Claus what you want. Uh-huh. Right. And we even set them up in the store so that the kid can go up there and tell Santa Claus what they want. And they get on his lap and tell him what they want. Uh huh. And that if you were ever so foolish that you want to celebrate these holidays, you know and I know that every now and then you say, Now, honey, if you want to know, get me something I would want to get. Right. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Does there anybody know anything about wantonness? Sure. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And he said, well, we used to live, but we don't live like that no more. Amen. We're not wanting a bunch of junk. Uh -huh. We're not living for our wants. Now, Galatians 5, 17 and 19 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So here's the King James definition of lasciviousness. Here's the King James Building Dictionary dis definition, so check this out. <laughs> the list. Uh -huh. So that you cannot do the things that you would, but if ye be led of the Spirit, uh -huh. you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. There it is. Mm -hmm. See? Unbridled sensuality, excess, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. There it is. That's what the world's into. Uh -huh. That's why this time of year, why else would any fool put mistletoe on his collar? Or hang mistletoe at the office? Uh -huh. there it is. It's not because they're planning on getting a piece of turkey leg later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the watchword of the hour is, I believe in the right to say, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh -huh. I believe absolutely every Catholic, every Roman Catholic has got a right, That's right. to wish people Merry Christmas. Amen. Because what are they saying? They're saying, oh, have a happy massacre of Christ. Uh -huh. Have a happy massacre of Christ because any fool that's ever wrote the Knights of Columbus in Columbus, Ohio, like I have, has got the book from the Knights of Columbus explaining that yes, when we have the Mass in our Catholic Church, we are sacrificing Christ once again that's right, brother. on right. the cross that's it. Right. in an unbloody way. That's right. When they call his body down into that wafer and change that fermented liquor into the blood of Christ, they're re-sacrificing Christ afresh on the cross. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. And it's called the Mass of Christ, Christmas. Right. And they're saying, Merry Christmas. Uh -huh. Be happy, have a nice time when you go to the Catholic Church and celebrate once again the death of our Lord. That sounds like something Satan would say to Beelzebub. Amen. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Let's crucify him again! Uh-huh. 
the princes of this world would not have done it if they realized how much it backfired on them into the will of God. Right. But doesn't that sound sacrilegious? Doesn't that sound mm -hmm. anti-Christ? Mm -hmm. To turn to someone and say, Ho, ho, I hope you have a happy massacre of Christ. Who but a devil would want to massacre Christ? Amen. <laughs> Never little, for sure, to do it again. Uh-huh, and again. And again, and again, mm -hmm. and again. Right. But yet we walked in lasciviousness. Amen. Right, right. Sensuality, unbridled sensuality and excess. The people, our eyes are full of adultery, the Bible says. Yes, amen. In the day in which we live. They're like horses neighing everyone after their neighbor's wife. Yes, amen. They walk in lasciviousness, lust. I'm saying, isn't this what the world's doing right now? Yes. Right. I mean, if we go to the bar, is the bar empty or is it full this time of year? Yeah. Why? Well, because they're having a party. All right. Uh -huh. You've heard the 12 days of Christmas, man. You just can't celebrate one day out of the year. Uh -huh. Amen? And so the, the wine and the liquor is, 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 is flowing. Amen? Uh -huh. The revelings, the banquetings. Yes. Oh, well, we've got to go to the banquet. Yeah. Uh -huh. right, aren't you going to the company banquet? Well, you're not going to get your bonus if you don't go. Uh -huh. You've got to go to the company banquet. Banquetings and abominable idolatries. Now, who but fool don't know that the name of the Catholic Church is they made a idol out of a wafer. Yeah. They made an idol out of a cup of wine. Uh-huh. Never mind all the little dollies they got of Mary and uh -huh. Joseph and the camels and all the other junk that they got. Yes, sir, all the statues and idols. Yeah. Is it an idol or not? Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Have you ever tried to wake up a Catholic saying, you claim to want to be a Christian, you can even claim your church is Christian, but why would you have idols in your church when God's against idols? And they haven't gotten it yet, have they? No, sir. No. And yet you claim you're not a Catholic, but yet you're going to go ahead and join hands in hands and say, Merry Christmas! There you go. Like you're one of them. Uh-huh. Right. You're what speech. does it fit with this picture? Uh-huh. Can, any, can anybody find Waldo? <laughs> I ask you, are you strange? Mm -hmm. Good question. Because verse 4 says, wherein they think it's strange. Uh-huh. That's that right. he run not with them. Amen, that's right. See, you're not supposed to be grabbing their hands and saying, yeah, let's go to the Mass. That's right, I'm with you. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I've got to have the right to say Merry Christmas. I want to wish people happy death to massacre again of Christ. Uh-huh. No, because you won't do it. They think you're a weirdo. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. They found Waldo, and you're it. <laughs> hey, hey. That's right. They think it's strange. They don't say, oh boy. He loves my same Jesus that my church has taught about. Thank God them Baptists put their Jesus away and join my Jesus for at least one month out of the year. Uh huh. Right. right. Is that the thinking of your average Methodist, Lutheran, Catholic? Yeah. 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 Do they have a different Jesus or not? Oh no, no, they all have the same Jesus. Brothers. According to your new versions. Uh huh. All right. There's only one version that sticks out and says, no, they don't. They don't have the same Jesus. Yeah. They ain't even got the same Bible. They won't even stick with our Catholic Vaticanist manuscripts. Right. You people are strange. Uh huh. Amen. I'll be home for Christmas, huh? Amen. 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 You know, when you're strange. Faces come out of the rain when you're strange. Amen. <laughs> no one remembers your name when you're strange. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There to differ. Amen. <laughs> People are strange when you're a stranger. And faces look ugly when you're alone. And women seem wicked when you're unwanted. And streets are uneven yeah. when you're down. Yeah. Somebody once wrote, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. That's just talking about getting high on dope. That's all that's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we can figure that one out. Because that's the world. That's what they think. 
Right. I'm so glad I got saved one day. Guess what? I got a new family. Amen. Amen. Here I am. I got a new home. Mm-hmm. Zoar Carson said, "I got it. I got new brothers and sisters in the Lord." Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. It, it don't matter to me no more what my family says. Right. When they have their little silly gatherings, I was watching my brother had it on tape. And he was showing me one of those family gatherings. And see, a long time ago, I couldn't go to these family gatherings. No. That's right. I mean, one of my brothers did some serious time in the penitentiary because why? Molest the little kids. I'm gonna take my kids around a fool like that. That's right. Even if he's in my own family. Amen. Yeah, yeah, because God told me not to even eat with him in 1 Corinthians yeah. chapter 5. Right. Yeah, right. Amen. I'm living for Jesus, and I don't live for me. Amen. Jesus wrote me in the book what to say. When somebody says they're a brother. That's right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's right. 1 Corinthians 5.11. Mm-hmm. You say all kinds of squat, and I don't give a flip. Amen. I'm living by Jesus now. Amen. I got a new master. Amen. And I am his slave. He can do with me what he wants, and he can command me, and I will say, yes, Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping someday he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen, Amen mm-hmm. brother. Good. And so the Bible tells us, yeah. See, they think it's strange that ye run not with them. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. See, you're supposed to bear the strange look by the world. Mm-hmm. Amen. If you're a Bible-walking believer, amen, they're going to think you're strange. Yeah. Amen. What are you doing out here street preaching? Ain't nobody does that. Uh-huh. You build a church somehow and make people go to your church, but man, keep it in the church. What are you doing out here? Well, sorry, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. amen. Isn't that interesting how you have your opinion, but God has his? And I'm staying on God's side. Whose side are you on, fool? The Catholic Church. Amen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> And of course, they're going to slander you as a believer. Of course, yes. they'll, they'll be your judge. They'll be happy to judge you and say, man, you ain't right. Uh-huh. Hey, they'll say all manner of things about you, but that's okay. They don't count. That's right. That's right. After all, God is the ultimate lawgiver in Him. Amen? And He's the judge. Amen. He is the ultimate judge. Amen. Right. So I'd rather be adjudicated by him and judged faithful than judged by you. Right. I don't want to be a compromiser. Amen. Amen. I want to stand well, with God 100% if it costs me everything i got. And it Amen. probably will cost you half the things you got if it don't cost everything. Amen. It could cost you your life. Yeah. Amen. It cost him his life, and isn't it not, isn't it not okay? Amen. Uh-huh. Glory to God. Shouldn't he receive the reward of his suffering? Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 10. Now, Jesus warned you in John 7, 7. Remember this great time when he's preaching here in the temple? Right. He said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Mm-hmm. Right. I wonder why I hate you, Jesus. But I can get along so well and blend, blend in like a chameleon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because I testify of it that the works are of are evil. That's right. Uh-huh. Amen. That's and if you, you will right. testify against the world and keep oh, telling them where to head in and say, man, you're full of the devil. You are a sinner and you're a wicked man. You're supposed to be a preacher and you say these things. You won't stand for God and with God you won't go to the Word of God. Uh-huh. Because you... Don't want to be hated because you want the world to love you. You right. want to be seeker friendly. Uh huh. That's straight out of hell. Amen. Right. John 15, what Jesus said in John 15. Yes. John 15. Let's pick it up here at verse uh, 18. Mm-hmm. If the world hates you, mm-hmm. notice how he put if because he knew <laughs> most people who claim the name of Jesus aren't going to stand with Jesus. Right. Amen. They want to blend in as getting along with everybody. Oh, Mary Green, man. <laughs> yeah, get winky out here. If the world... Amen. What does he say? <laughs> if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me. Uh-huh. Before I hated you. See, the more you're like Jesus, the more naturally your family who loves the world and is full of the world. Right. And your neighbors, of course, are nothing but worldly. See, in the old Bible days, and the old preachers, and the old church days, this used to be called worldliness. Yeah, that's right. He used to be no real Christian would even think of coming to church dressed like the world dresses. Amen. Amen. And now it's, oh, just come to yard. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. It's okay. Yes. Got a new mm-hmm. Used to be real Christians knew, ah, i got to really walk and 
separate myself, even my clothing and my right. attire and my hair. Show my heart. Right. Because Amen. I'm supposed to be a Christian. That's right. Amen. Amen. Peculiar. Now, the preachers in the churches used to take a stand and they say, yeah, we want to take a stand with the Bible, with God, and with Christ, and we are not into worldliness. Right. It's called worldliness. Amen. You know something? You don't ever hear that word no more. No. No, sir, you don't. If the world likes... Okay, he said, if the world hates you, you know it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. See, you're in dangerous territory when you say, well, I'm a believer. Nobody's offended at me. Uh huh. There you go. Put down. That ever happened to Josh McDowell? Is Josh McDowell went up here to Dearborn to the Muslim festival, and that's what he said. He come out and said, "Well, hey, no Muslims were upset with me. Of course not, Josh. You just sit in the tent and hide underneath there and sat down at your table trying to sell and give away your books. Right. Well, that ain't what God called you to do, man. Haven't you ever read the Bible where He said, "Go out and preach." Amen. 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 Then the mayor tried to hold him up as, oh, look what a great Christian man and apologist this man is. And look how we didn't have no trouble with him coming to the Muslim festival. Of course not. He didn't preach any. Amen. That's right. <laughs> That's right, brother. That's right. Right. He didn't tell That's right. Wrong. <laughs> He's got eight all over his face. Yeah. And he's so stupid he don't know it. Because he's too worldly. Uh-huh. If he were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. There you go. Therefore, the world hateth you. And that's why some of you still are having trouble coming all the way on over. Uh huh. The way Gateway stands, because the truth is, you don't want them to hate you. Uh huh. Right. There you go. Yeah, you're awful going to heaven and stuff, but just as long as it don't affect your living here right now. Uh huh. Man, if it affects your dress and your what kind of even glasses you wear, and you ain't interested in hearing about it. Yep. Amen. Even though, again, you think of Christ was your owner, man. Oh, man, how more can I make you my Lord? Amen. How more can I be his slave? It's an honor to be his servant. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said of you. The servant's not greater than That's his right. Lord. If the, they persecuted me, they will also they will. persecute Amen. you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Hallelujah. Which they none lost this book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Famine in the land. Whoops. It's a great truth here. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 21, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yep. Yeah. They'll think they're doing God's service putting you down. Right? Yes. And standing up for the world and calling you strange. Amen. And I say, why can't it be both ways? They're strange to me. Uh-huh. Strangers. That's right. Treat them like a stranger. Amen. Don't take candy from a stranger. Is that what they say? Might be the devil. Amen. Giving you poison. Uh huh. Amen. What he say in John 17? Let's see what he said in the yeah. real prayer here. Hey, 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 to the Father. Hey, hey. In John 17, 14, he said, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Mm -hmm. See, that's what they hate. Uh huh. If we could just stand up and say, Well, I'm seeking God like the Muslim and the Sikhs and the Mohammedans and Oh, yes, that we're all brothers. We're all just seeking uh -huh. God here. Yeah, that comes what up. makes us different is, no, we done got the word. Right. <laughs> we already know what we're supposed to do. Uh -huh. They hate that. Uh-huh. Because they can never be sure if there is a God, let alone what all we're supposed to do to please Him. Right. We've got a sure word Amen. prophecy. Amen. Right. Amen. We've got Jesus, the living word. We've got a King James Bible, the written word. Amen. Oh, they hate that. Yes, they do. Because we can all go back to chapter and verse and say, well, here's what God says about it. No, oh, it's so disruptive. Uh -huh. I've given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See? Amen. See? That's right. Amen. Let's go to 1 John 3. Amen. 1 John 3, 13. John 3.13 Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Mm -hmm. yep. 
See, it's not supposed to be something you're surprised, surprised at. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Amen. You should expect the That's world the to hate you. Right. Amen, brother. You should yeah. expect right. your church to be right. caught fire. You should expect trouble. You should expect your car to get scratched. You should expect your windshield to be shot out. You should expect somebody to try to knife you yeah, and cut your clothes. You should expect somebody to shoot over your head a shotgun, hoping a pellets land on it. Right. And they're just hitting through the leaves Sam and the woods there. above you, yeah, the yeah. trees. Things happen. Amen. Some people living for their Lord, and their Lord is not your Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, Lord Let's go brain. back to chapter 2, 1 John 2. Mm -hmm. 1 John 2, 15. There you go. There's a good one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If Amen. any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's it. It's not of the Father. It's of the world. Amen. It is. Amen. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he yes. that doeth the will of the God by his Amen. 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 Little Amen. children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. Amen. Many Antichrists. Amen. What fool don't know? Why is it a Christmas tree? Why in Jeremiah 10 did God say, now look you people, you don't go cutting a tree, dragging it in your house, and nail it up, putting up no more. And start decking. Right. Where did this ancient practice come from? What fool don't know that, listen, that, that, that the part of worshiping Baal goes all the way back to Nimrod. Mm -hmm. right. And it all goes, everything the Catholic Church ever come up with is nothing but old worship of Nimrod and Tammuz and the weeping of Tammuz and the, the Easter Bunny and Ashtaroth and all that. It, it's the most ancient of Babylon is where this religion is hatched from. And of course the Roman Catholic Church adopted all these pagan and heathen practices and just rechristened it with a new name and formed what's now called the Roman Catholic Church, which again the media calls Christianity. Right. All right, the media. And it's all true lies. Uh -huh. There's a reason why in Washington, D.C. they have this giant phallic symbol called the Washington Monument. Right. Right. There's a reason why St. Peter's, St. Peter's Basilica has a, a, a little miniature yeah. Washington monument of their own. Oh, right. Because it's a male phallic symbol. Right. Uh -huh. The Bible speaks so much of the trees because there's an erect tree. The higher and taller and the straighter, the better. And they would worship it because this is a fertility right. This is a part of the worship of Baal. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. And yet all these Christians say, well, you know, I think of the Christmas tree and it's green and Christians need to yeah. grow and the tinkling lights because we're supposed to be a light to the world. You know, the little peppermint uh, candy cane and the red reminds me of the blood of Jesus and you know, the white reminds me of the... Yeah. Okay, that's cute, that's cool, that's cool. Wait a minute, why do you keep getting on your knees in front of you? Yeah, stand up and get your gifts, huh? <laughs> Something's an idol somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when you actually read the Old Testament, you find out that's why God so, got so mad at these people. Right, right. The reason He cast the inhabitants out first is because they're vulnerable customs. We just read that in the scriptures here on a Thursday night recently. How it was the customs of the Canaanites and of so much pornography that that's why God cast them out. The land spewed them out so that God gave them the land. Right. And the reason God had the sun stand still when Joshua asked God if he wouldn't make the sun stand still and the moon to stand in this place, and of course all the flooding and all the storming it caused, and them hailstones to come and go around in Israelite and kill the enemies, and all that wonder of that day, and yet the Bible says all of it's going to happen again when Jesus comes back. There's a reason this is one of the most important doctrines in the Bible, because the Bible says it's going to happen again. Yes. When the Lord comes back. And he, he will destroy his enemies. That's right. And when he goes in all this detail, and so we see the average schmuck preacher. Well, here's a wonderful example to us of how we in our dysfunctional families today have the psychological lesson, and we were going to get along so well and do so well. No, no, no. Let's just cut out all the crap. Let's get back to the doctrine taught in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Why was God so mad with Israel? Right. Right. Because they adopted those heathen pagan right. customs. Right. Uh -huh. And he didn't want them to. He didn't want them getting on their knees in front of anything but him. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Bro. Even if it only was a symbol thousands of years ago. This guy's bought by blood of Jesus. Man, I'm gonna celebrate Jesus' birthday again. 
I'm gonna get on my knees and get them presents out for my kids and see what they got me for my birthday, my Christmas present. And, and in the corner, Satan is laughing his head off. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at them on their knees in front of that pagan phallic symbol again. Uh huh. Saying they love Jesus, yeah. man. Forward, I'm so glad I got them so fooled and they're so I'll foolish and don't even have a clue. Powers and principalities. Of what man. they're doing. That's right. And they got it so twisted that they call good evil evil good. <laughs> That's right. Never mind. God said it would be that way. Ah, I pulled it off. Uh huh. And the Holy Ghost in you see he's quenched. That's he's right. He's screamed. That's right. And you wonder why you can't get no prayers answered. Yeah, you wonder why you don't see God healing anybody of any sicknesses you're praying about. Mm. There are many antichrists whereby we know that this is the last time they went out from us, but they were not of us. Yeah. Amen. Right. For they'd been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Uh huh. There you go. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all. There you go. That's where it's at. Any bozo can say he's a Christian. That's any right. bozo can say he's a member of Gateway Baptist. But he right. usually quits along the way. Hey, Amen. Right. When it becomes, oh, your church is too extreme. Right. <laughs> too extreme. Uh huh. Well, I notice all your worldliness seems pretty extreme to me, too. Uh huh. The <laughs> road goes both ways. Uh -huh. Yes, sir, brother. There's many antichrists. Yeah. Yes. I, I personally, I don't know why you wouldn't stick with the real pure Jesus. Uh huh. I couldn't get into that antichrist and that antichrist music. Uh huh. Those antichrist ways myself. Synthetic stuff. There's something in me that's called us Holy Spirit that says, That's not holy, son. That's profane. Get away from it. Amen. Don't you dare be going around with Merry Christmas on your lips. Uh huh. You don't say Happy Massacre of Christ. What a sacrilege. What a satanic saying. Uh huh. No real Christian could ever say such a thing. 1 Corinthians 10 14 is a good verse. Amen. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. He's supposed to be up holding hands with him. He's supposed to be, I do like the Catholics who are definitely idolaters next door and go ahead and drag it in. Well, I'm a Baptist. No, you ain't. Uh -huh. In the eyes of the world, you're just another fool. Celebrating the Catholic Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Sure what it looks like. Amen. 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 How about Romans 13, 13? So I'm flipping through the Bible. I'm going to flip a little more. Yes, sir. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Mm -hmm. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Amen. Hmm. See, Christian, you're supposed to be strange and not go to the Christmas party and not give the two dollars for the boss. Uh -huh. Be strange. Let them call you the names they call you. Let them there you go. you the things you'll suffer. Because again, you got a new master. Amen. Amen. He's worthy. He'll take better care of you. Amen. And he might move you up a notch or two because he sees the sacrifice you're asked to perform for his sake. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Romans 11.4. Romans 11.4. I mean, ready? Another title of this message might be Why a Christian Should Not Do Christmas. Amen. 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 Why a Christian Should Not Do Christmas. And be weird. Right. Because, man, God's supposed to save you from something, and that should be one of the things He saved you from. Amen. So you don't have to do that crap no more. Right. Romans 11, verse 4, But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image, notice what it says, to the image of Baal. That's a Christmas tree. Uh huh. The Christmas tree is a Baal pole. Uh -huh. But right. dummy don't know that. What fool has never read his slaps, uh, Babylon, two Babylons, that old book written way back there in the olden days, to know that, yes, part of church history is to know where the churches come up with this junk. 
and how it came straight from the worship of the devil himself. It's a failing symbol. Right. Now, we're supposed to be avoiding pornography, but you're telling me, oh no, go ahead, it's okay. Right. Because we made it all about the baby Jesus. Uh huh. Man, next thing you know, you want to celebrate circumcision. Be like these stupid uh, Orthodox priests and put a bunch of wine in your mouth, and when the kid gets circumcised, put your mouth full of wine around that kid's circumcision and suck the blood off. Of his little penis now. Isn't that intelligent? Isn't that yeah. smart? Yeah. Thank God somebody's objected to it in New York. Amen. Right. We wonder where all this pedophilia comes from. Uh huh. Religion. Straight up weirdos, man. Well, they call us weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why well, they speak evil of you? <laughs> That's a good example of how God will give them people over to a reprobate mind who once knew God. Right. See. Right. And rejected His word and rejected His revelation. Right. Uh huh. Decided to go with the rabbis' traditions. Right. And make right. them just as much the word of God right. as the scriptures. No, no, no. It's supposed to be the scriptures. Silly rabbi. Uh huh. Tricks for dreads, amen. Amen. So, so I'm about to establish their own righteousness. Thank God we got a Bible. Amen, and God's called us to holiness. And there really is a difference between us and the world, and we're not to display worldliness. So let's go to First Peter four and wrap this thing up now. Conclusion. Bear the strange look by the world. Because they think it's strange that you run not with them. See, I can't join hands with them. Amen. To the same excess of riot, speaking evil of me. Now, when's the last time somebody spoke evil of you at this season of the year? Because Amen. you kind of somehow, some way, stood out and stood for your Lord instead of standing for the Antichrist. And is not the Pope the Antichrist? Amen. Well, why would you help people celebrate his traditions? Uh-huh. Right. Right, and yet right. you claim Jesus has saved you from the Catholic Church and you don't believe in the Pope. Well, why will you do his traditions? Uh-huh. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Good question. Why do you do any Mass at all if you say you're saved and a Baptist at all? I don't understand that. Good question. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, let's get this viral some way. <laughs> <laughs> On the Internet. Amen. Amen. People need to see this simple Bible truth. Amen. By this simple redneck preacher. <laughs> wherein they think it strange you run not with them to the same excess of rights speaking evil of you who shall give account to him that's ready to judge him, the quick and the dead see I'm standing for a real God someday a real judge Amen. Amen. not these two big judges can be bought off with a, a good a payment a good ticket a good, that's it uh, that's right yes sir what do they call it when you got to pay that ticket yeah, that fine. <laughs> Follow the example of those who have gone before for, for this cause was the gospel preached also unto them that are dead. Now it's interesting because over there he talked about how Jesus, when he went to hell for us, he preached in the spirits of prison, verse 19 of chapter 3. Right. But then when he stepped over to paradise, he says, but he preached, amen? But for, uh, for for this cause was the gospel preached also unto them that are dead. Amen. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh. See, most of it was men in the flesh who killed them for standing for God. And they died and went to paradise. And so thank God Jesus went to hell for us and then he stepped over to paradise and he moved paradise and took captivity captive. Amen. Amen. And he rose from the dead. Many of the saints were seen alive when Jesus rose from the dead. They came out of the graves too. Amen. And they went walking around the city of Jerusalem because they didn't know what to do. They said, man, this ain't heaven. I thought I was going to go to heaven. <laughs> so they said, well, uh, let's go get a newspaper. Maybe we can find out what's going on. So they went downtown Jerusalem. And many of the saints arose, man. And people knocked on their door. And, uh, let's see who it is. We heard open the door. And, oh, Uncle Malachi, we buried you three weeks ago. What are you doing here? <laughs> and they fooled around, ratchet dog, jawed for, I believe, for about 12 hours. And finally, you know... Jesus, um, we see the girls early that morning before the sun rose. He said, well, I haven't sent it to the Father yet. Now, hang on up. But then in a few minutes, okay, he took off. And finally, oh, bye-bye. <laughs> they all took off with him. He's like Superman. They left. Right. Huh. Then Jesus come back, and then he hung out for 40 days, 40 nights. That's right. He showed himself alive with many infallible bruises. Now they can touch him. He just sent it to the Father. The Father changed his molecular body somehow. Maybe used the leaves of the tree. I don't know. 
but so they could touch him. Now he can eat flesh and honeycomb. Here, Tom, reach your hand in here, boy. Uh -huh. Put these holes in my hands. Yeah, right. In my side. Oh, Thomas said, oh, I don't need to touch Jesus. <laughs> hey, amen. I'm sorry, yeah. Jesus. Uh -huh. My Lord and my God. Yeah, the yeah. Thomas said, Repentance he there. He rightfully huh? called Jesus his Lord and his God. Amen. Right. Amen. And I call him my Lord and my God. Amen. Follow that example. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that were dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. See? You know, this is man's day. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people can judge you. Yeah, they can give you the finger. Yeah, they can persecute you. They might even blow your head off. It's okay. Man is judging and condemning people today. But believe you me, God's day is coming. Amen? Amen. God's day is coming. And brother, that's what I'm counting on. Amen. People say, well, you would have more of an effect if you would only... We do have an effect. We talk about. Yeah. <laughs> you could be much more successful if you would only... Yeah, but see, I'm only living for one thing. Not for what the world calls success. Right. We have to right. hear Jesus say, well done, thou and faithful servant. Amen. Right. That's all I'm living for. Amen. Well, look what benefits you'd have if you just become a 501c. See, there's no end to it. Uh -huh. Justifying what goes on for success. You mm -hmm. to have more nickels and noses. But I'm not living for nickels and noses. That's how the world thinks. Right. Of course, Fifth Avenue tactics work for all the stores and companies that are living and working on Fifth Avenue. Right. But I am an ambassador of a heavenly kingdom. Yes. Amen. Believe me, I represent an alien race. First Corinthians 4, 3, Paul said, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Why, Paul? Because Paul was sold out to God. Mm -hmm. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified but he that judges me is the Lord. Amen. 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 That's what I'm living for. How about you? Amen. Amen. I'm not living for my Christmas gift. You mean you didn't give me one? No. <laughs> I'm living for him. Amen. Because I received the gift. Amen, brother. Amen. And it's made such a revolutionary change in my life that that's all the gifts I need. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your unspeakable gift. That precious blood of the Lord Jesus and how it was put on that mercy seat so that we could be atoned for our sins. And Lord, we know our rightful place is right there in hell with the devil himself burning forever. But we know Jesus saved us. Jesus took upon it himself to go to hell for us, even as Peter preached. Lord, we know whereof we speak that we have eternal life and that that life is in your Son. How we pray for anyone here, Lord, that may not have the Son and not have life. Mm -hmm. We pray that they'll receive Jesus and get that Son so they can have that eternal life as well. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Page you got <coughs> Page 402. While we sing this song, we invite you to come forward. We dedicate your life to living for the Lord now. Living to His glory. Selling out 100%. Let Him be your master. Hear ye the master's call.
for us and we'll be dismissed for lunch. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you now, Lord, for the time to be with the brethren, Lord, to hear your word Amen. preached. God, to lift up Jesus Christ. Yes. We thank you so much for that blood that was shed at the cross, at the cross, Lord, at Calvary. God, help us now to live for you and live right. Lord, if we're strangers to that world, that's all the better. Amen. I thank you so much, Lord, that we would uh, love one another, be pleasing unto you, help us now to enjoy the fellowship with each other, to pray you bless this food to our body. We thank you for those hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.